So happy Wednesday, happy dentist day to everyone. Um, thank you all so much for making the time to be with us on a Wednesday. We really appreciate y'all's time. Um, I appreciate the moderators a lot for taking time off dental school. I know it is not an easy task. I also would like to thank the mentees for making the time. Like being here it shows that you're invested in your future in dentistry. And that is like one of the main steps in order to ensure your success. My name is Luma. I am the VP of Diversity in Dentistry, but I think my most important role is being being in charge of programming and ensuring that I help diversity in dentistry in achieving the goal of making sure that there are the resources available, especially for the minority population or underrepresented dentists or dental students in navigating this path of approaching dental school and applying to dental school. Um, but before I go any further, um, I am honored that Dr. Lila made the time to be here. She's a founder, and I'll let her uh, share a few words. Oh, thank you. Thank you, student Dr. Luma, and welcome. Hi, everyone. Happy Dentist Day. It was always a nice, sometimes it's a surprise, and it's always great when the team celebrate us, and you just make you realize when you're having some tough days as a dentist, as a dentist it makes you reflect on all the great times and all the impact that you're making and one of the greatest parts about being a dentist, of course, is being a mentor. Mentor not only to our up and coming dentists that are not too far behind, like our panelists that we have here from UCLA School of Dentistry, but also reaching back a little further down the pathway to some underrepresented youth in middle school and high school. So this is why we are here as Diversity and Dentistry Mentorships, this nonprofit to really help lengthen and strengthen that diversity pathway. Um, to make dentistry available to everyone so that we can help drive health equity. So your part here is making a difference, is making an impact. And we we know it will really help make a difference because the conversation we're going to have today is one of the barriers that many um, in, from underrepresented communities face. And that is really performing well on the DAT, um, learning how to crack the DAT, how to prepare for the TAT, how to how to pay for the DAT. So I think we're going to talk on a little bit of everything, but really trying to get you prepared because our goal is to increase the applicant pool of strong qualified candidates um, so that we can strike a balance in our dental workforce. And that is, that's why we're here. So I don't want to take any more time. Um, again, thank you all for being here. And I'm excited to jump into the conversation and I'll turn it back over to you, Luma, to have our, our panelists introduce themselves what year they are in dental school at UCLA, um, and just a, a short introduction. That'd be great. Thank you. I, thank you so much, Dr. Laila, Dr. Haishal. Um, so um, I had shared the agenda with you all, and we will try to stick to that agenda as best as possible. But if there is anything that was on there that you would like to add to or you'd like to change, please feel free to do so. As I shared, um, diversity in dentistry mostly, it is, like, it is a resource. It is mostly a resource for underrepresented minority because as we all know as dental students there is a lot that we don't know especially um especially just making sure you present your best foot, you put your best foot forward. So what we have done so far this year at the our very first session was um, talking about our goal setting. And then we talked about the budget because when I first looked into dental school, it cost about 9,000 to apply. <laughs> and now it's about 13,000. So we talked about the budgeting. We've talked about, uh, we've talked about goal setting. So we are really now talking about the important part of like, um, the dental application, the dental school, the DAT test. So for each of the panelists, for Olivia, um, student Dr. Mora, student Dr. Landa, student Dr. Evans, and student Dr. Nguyen, if you can please just share um, what motivated you for the, to, dental, um, to apply to dental school and what you think was your best tip, uh, what resource you use for, to study for the DAT and what your most, um, what has been the most interesting thing so far to you as regards to preparing for dental for the DAT and transferring it to your career as a dental student right now? So what motivated you for dentistry, <laughs> what you used to study, and how would that help to you so far? I will have Maura start since she's the closest to my name. Okay. I was about to ask you if you wanted any particular order. Um, so my name's Livier Mora. Um, I'm a non-traditional student almost in every regard. I'm 
I started dental school when I was 30. I had taken some gap years. I have a daughter who's like somewhere in the background here. Um, I was born in Guadalajara, Mexico. Um, my family moved to the U.S. when I was seven years old. Um, and I didn't become a legal permanent resident until about eight years ago. So during the time that I was graduating high school and all that, like Dream Act wasn't really a thing. Um, but once I became a resident and when I found out I was going to be a mother, I was like, it's, it's, it's go time. Okay. It's never going to be any easier than this. So I might as well do it. Um, I had an inkling that I wanted to do something in the health care field, but I didn't know exactly what it was. So I arrived at dentistry more as like a process of elimination, so to speak. Um, and I think that's totally okay. Like I didn't have a dentist in my family. I didn't have anybody that I was even remotely close to that I could ask, like, what does it even mean? Um, but in undergrad, I liked, well, even since high school, like I liked biology, I liked the sciences and I transferred to UCLA. Um, I studied neuroscience. I thought I was gonna be in medical school. And then um, I took a gap year off. I worked at USC at their medical school doing research um, as an assistant. And that's when COVID hit. And I was like, man, this is this is wild. Like I, you know, I already have a child. I want to have better work life balance in the future. Um, and that's when I was like, OK, dentistry is is more about the direction that I want to go. You're still going to help people. Um, and it also coincided around the time that I would have to take the DAT and really buckle down. So for me, it was serendipitous that COVID and the pandemic lockdown happened because it really cut down like my commute time to work, my commute time to take my daughter to school. So I was able to like have a really regimented schedule and stick to it. Um, and one of the reasons why I took that gap year off was because I needed to work and save money for dental school applications. I was also fortunate that during that year, a lot of my, well, actually all of my interviews were online. So I was able to save what I had budgeted for travel and flights and everything and have a, a little bit of comfort walking into first year of dental school. But I don't know if I missed anything. Oh, for resources, I used a DAT bootcamp. I 100% recommend that. Um, I know that there are other resources that uh, students use that are probably twice or thrice as expensive so for me it wasn't even like this is the best it was like this is the cheapest and I'm gonna make the best out of it so I'm just trying to keep it real um I had a very tight budget um so I was like living with my parents and trying to make every end meet so that I could um apply for that cycle but we'll delve more into the stuff as the questions come along I, I hope I covered it all <laughs> Yes, you did. Thank you so much. And so beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. And student Dr. Nguyen, if you could please go next. Share next. Me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Marie. Um, I'm currently a D1 at UCLA. A little bit about me is that I grew up in San Jose, so the Bay Area, California. I attended UCI for my undergrad. And after graduating from UCI, I took a couple gap years before I started dental school. So my first gap year, I did a post back program. And then my second gap year, I worked during that time. In terms of why I decided to do dentistry or the reason that led me to where I am today, it would be because my dad, growing up, my dad's a dental lab technician. So with him, I would always go with him to deliver cases to different dental offices. And as a result, I kind of got an idea of what like the environment would be like. So when I was growing up, I had an inkling that, you know, I kind of want to go into dentistry. But the thing is, when I got to college, I was like, is this something I want to do? Or is it something that was influenced? I don't know if it's actually something that I want to do. So in order to solidify my decision, I did a lot of volunteering. I shadowed and I worked. And I think what really got it for me is after I volunteered because I volunteered at a free health fair and during that health fair I had the opportunity to assist a dentist and so being in that kind of environment seeing what I could possibly do something I could do in the future as a dentist it was something that really motivated me to apply so that was my reason um, as to why I ended up doing dentistry uh, in terms of the DAT 
since I took it twice, the first time I took it, I used DAT booster. And then the second time I took it, I used DAT boot cap. So we can go some more into that once we get to the panel. But yeah, nice to meet everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much, student Dr. Marie. Uh, student Dr. Evans, if you could please share next. Yes, hi, I'm Iman Evans. I'm also a non-traditional student like Livier. Um, I'm from South Carolina, but I go to UCLA third year. I studied Spanish in college and I had a Bachelor of Arts. My minor was dance, so I was definitely not on the traditional path to go into healthcare. But um, I was working in mortgage industry, had a lot of different positions there, didn't like it. And I was like, I need to find something that I actually want to do. And I actually got into mortgages because I was bilingual and they needed someone who spoke Spanish. Um, so I started doing my research, started taking classes. I was like, if I can just get through this biology and this chemistry, we'll see if I'll actually get into healthcare field. And um, I took the classes while I was working full time. I shadowed. I was in between dentistry and being on an eye doctor. I shadowed dentistry, didn't even pursue anything else because I loved what I saw. <laughs> and that's how it ended up here. Um, as for the resources that I used, I used a combination of DAT boot camp and booster as well. Is there anything else that I missed? For now, not for, okay. for now. Thank you so much. And student mm -hmm. Dr. Landa. Hi everyone, my name's Crystal Landa. Um, I'm a D3. Uh, my classmates are Yvonne and Olivier. Um, like both of them, I am also non-traditional. Um, so I went into community college knowing I wanted to do dentistry, but didn't really know how I would get to point B. Um, I always describe my academic journey like I was just rolling around like a ball getting pushed here, there. Um, so it was, it was quite crazy um, just because I am first gen, didn't know what I was doing, didn't know what resources were exactly, how to ask for resources, any of it. I was just kind of like going day by day. I was at a community college for four years. And then I finally transferred out to Cal Poly Pomona where I stayed there for three years. So it took me a total of seven years to graduate. I took a gap year um, to study for the DAT because I knew I needed that time. Um, I consider myself a very... Uh, like context-based learner and I study on the slower end than most people. So I gave myself a whole year to study and I'm really glad I did that. Um, as well as like, I couldn't really balance school and studying for the DAT just because I know how I get and I know at what point I would get overwhelmed. So I was like, I'm just going to study for it once I graduate and I'm going to put all my effort and time into studying for the DAT. Um, the resources that I used were like Iman, um, DAT Booster and DAT Bootcamp. Um, I found benefits to both, and we can talk about that more later. And the reason why I chose dentistry was um, primarily because my family lacked dental care growing up. I didn't really see it much. Um, I've gone years without seeing a dentist. Um, and the very few times that I did go, um, I felt really good going like oh like this is this is cool I felt special um and I knew from a young age I wanted to do dentistry because of that so when I graduated high school I wanted to make sure I was doing it for the right reasons and I took a dental assisting course a year-long program I loved it I worked as a dental assistant for four years while going to college and I really fell in love with the field thank you Thank you so much for sharing. What a lesson in self-awareness. Um, and it is a good segue to like my next question. So, um, and I also love that all of you shared that you're very non-traditional and you still found a way to navigate um, the process to get into dental school, which brings me to the thing. Um, for a lot of for a lot of non-traditional students or a lot of people with no history of a dentist or someone that has gone that path for them, you really don't know how to, there's really not that many, res there's a lot of resources on out there, but it's hard to filter them. I like how student Dr. Landa shared her self-awareness. Um, one thing that we see is people always going online. Can you share your study schedule? Can you share your study schedule? So, um, how did you come about making your study schedule and did you actually stick to it? 
because with the DATs coming up, application opens in <laughs> June. A lot of people are taking their DATs around now, and I'm sure that's like the first question. What is your study schedule? Can you share your study schedule with me? Um, I can I can start if you'd like. Sure. Um. So, like I mentioned, so when you go on to resources like DAT Bootcamp, they usually have like a schedule for you. Yes. It's very ambitious. <laughs> Um, at least, at least for me, it was, I couldn't keep up with it. And to be completely honest, I cried for like the first four days because I was like, there's no way I can't, I can't do this. Especially in my case where I took a lot of my classes, like Gen Chem and OChem in 2014, 2015, and I'm applying in 2020. So it's been, it's long gone already yeah. I had to relearn a lot of the things. Um, one thing, one of the biggest lessons I learned <clears throat> while I was studying for the DAT is make a schedule that works with your work ethic and with your learning style and don't compare yourself to others because there's going to be a lot of people that maybe have more stamina than you that can go longer and that can study more, but ultimately do what works for you in terms, I found a little, um, like a little study group that I got in where, which I woke up at seven in the morning and I would have breakfast. I would be at my computer by eight in the morning. Um, and I would zoom with one of my friends who's actually also in dental school with me. And we would study from eight, take a break at 12, um, come back at three study till 10. And we just studied all day. We didn't study together though. And what I did was basically, um, I touch just the sciences and I know that some applicants can, um, you know, have different um, study, study things that they did. But for me, my sciences, I really wanted to focus on them. And I just primarily focused on the sciences and I just went through all the questions. I had a notebook and every question that I got wrong, I wrote down in my notebook and the next day I would review it. And I did that for every single question until I got all the questions down. And I think that's what really prepared me. Thank you so much for sharing. Student Dr. Evans, did you so have a schedule? Did you stick to it? I did. I tried to use the boot camp study schedule, but like Crystal said, I guess I'll give contact. So I was, most of the time that I was trying to study, I was also working. So it was very not realistic for me to be able to keep up with that schedule. Sure. Um, so what I tried to do was modify it and try to take, okay, instead of with the time frame that they have, I'm just going to do half of that and then just double the study time. But um, I wasn't able to stick to the original study schedule that I had. Thank you. Student Dr. Marie. You're mute. <laughs> um, so I would have to say that it was different for because I took the DAT twice and mm -hmm. my study methods were different each time. So the first time what I did just for context, how it all started, I joined the Facebook page and I saw that there were a lot of people who were doing well. And because they had a specific study method that helped them do well, I figured, okay, maybe if I tried that, maybe that will help me. So, you know, like I tried to follow the schedule that they provided us. It was very intense. So I did have to slow it down just personally for me. Um, and one thing that they said about Booster, the first reason why I got it was because it's a cheaper option. Yes. And second, people were saying it was more high yield. And so I figured, okay, well, let's do what everyone else is doing, right? They're all focusing on the practice test, making sure that they know by heart every single thing that was covered because it was so high yield. However, when I took the actual DAT, that was not the case. And so the second time around, because I had already known everything by heart from Booster, I had to use Bootcamp. And the second time around, I didn't follow their schedule. For me, it was like, okay, what can I do to get down this material? It doesn't matter how they do it. I just have to be able to remember it because going through the material is one thing, but remembering it's different. So I kind of did my own pace, made sure that when I was going through the material, I was actually remembering it. So then I would make study cards. I would make notes, outlines, note what I didn't understand, what I already did understand because I had already studied. 
I already studied for three months. So now I'm studying for another three months. So I built on the knowledge that I already had, followed it up by going through the boot camp, all the content, making sure that I knew everything and then took the test and then I did well. So I'm glad that worked out for me. I just want to say that study methods are different for everyone Everybody. and you have to kind of figure out what works best for you because it's not to say that a study method that worked for someone else is wrong. It's just, that's not what will work for you. So you also have to kind of learn what study methods are best for you. Like everyone else was saying, the schedule is a bit rigorous, so slow it down and try your best to do what works for you. So that was what I would have to say. Uh, do do, you so do, much do I do I answer that question? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, for yeah, so, okay. So uh, oh, to... should, should, we, should we go through everyone first? Yes, please. Okay, let's do that. Thank you so much. Student Dr. Mora. Okay. Um but so my schedule, I'm I'm kind of OCD when it comes to like managing my time. Um, and that's not even because I like it that way. It's just that I feel like if I need to get stuff done, I need to see where my time is going. And that's the only way I can calibrate. But I agree totally that there's no one size fits all study plan. Um my what I did is like I kind of broke up the DAT like calendar that they had and like whatever sections that I felt I was strong in I was like okay I'm not gonna read this I'm gonna go do the practice questions and if I'm scoring like what I need to be then I'm gonna move on to the next thing so I was able to kind of condense here and there um but I would wake up like I'm not even kidding because everyone was home at that time because of COVID. I would have to wake up before everybody else was awake if I wanted any quiet time. So I would study from like five to seven, then like have coffee, breakfast, whatnot, get my daughter logged onto her Zoom, log onto my work, and then like middle of the day, just completely forget everything, like have a mental break, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes a mental breakdown, um, if I'm being honest, and then um, finish up the day she was doing kindergarten. So like, it wasn't that bad. Her day was over, but I still had work. So mm -hmm. fortunately, like sometimes at that point, my mom would like hang out with her, take her to the park or do something. And then if, if it was slow with like my work or I had finished my work for the day, I'd hop back on to like DAT boot camp, And that was like, go, go, go for like the three months leading up to the exam. Um, I would also very highly emphasize that even if you space out your studying, um, the day of the test is going to be a marathon. And if you've only been walking, even if you've been power walking, the day of the test is going to feel like a ton of breaks. If you don't like prepare yourself for the like stamina that you need to be on high recall, high alert for like, or I, I forget how many hours it is now. But so I did a lot of, not a lot. I did like at least three practice tests where I like sat down and I was like, I'm going to pretend this is the test. And like, I even put like a sign on the wall. I was like, nobody disturbed me unless the house is on fire, you know? Like, <laughs> so you have to prepare for that. Cause I snack a lot and I like, I'm always sipping on something and I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do this in the test. So I have to recreate that environment so that you can That's push it yourself in that oh. setting. Um, I also very like, and this has worked for me through, even through dental school, um, I'm very like focused on building mental maps. So the same way that if I give you nine digits and have no way of associating them, there's no way you're going to remember. But if I give you a phone number and you couple it, like you're more likely to remember. So I would do like mental maps, like, okay, like or organic chemistry is in this whatever room that I'm studying. And I know it sounds crazy, but if it kind of strikes that that's like your style of learning where you're more visual look up YouTube videos and like, think of ways that you can make it all consolidate. Cause then like, just see yourself as this is one more thing you have to do to get into dental school. Dental school is going to be harder than the DAT. So <laughs> you're preparing yourself to like be at that caliber. And I truly think that like, if you're already here, you have what it takes. You're investing in the, the time that you need to grow that skill. Um, and we're here for you. Like, I will give you tough love if you need uh, like a little sit down and like, like, let's look at your time. Like, what are you doing? What time? I had a, a an Excel sheet with like a 15 minute to 30 minute intervals. So you can do it. You just have to be disciplined. Um, 
And if you have to take it again, like, so be it. Like, don't let this discourage you, you know? Thank you so much for sharing. I think um, I think it's like really important to emphasize that you make a study schedule that works for you because a lot of pre dance will ask you, what was your study schedule? Can you please share it with me? And for the most part, when you try to say, no, you make what works for you, it almost seems as if you're trying to guide your study schedule and you're not trying to share. And I also like that um, a few of you shared that you did have someone keeping you accountable. Um, someone has asked if you feel as if one resource was better than the other. But what I would like to ask, especially for the people that use multiple, or that is especially because we do have some mentees that have to retake the exam, even the first time or the second time you took it, how did you, did you feel you were prepared? Or like, what do you do to make sure that you feel prepared before taking the exam? Like, how do you determine the prepared that you're ready? I know um, student doctor Mora, you all are student doctors, so long as you're a dentist, I call you a student doctor. <laughs> Especially student doctor Mora had shared that, had shared that she took at least three full length exams. For me, I always say take five full length exams in like a test situation. What are other things that you can propose to do to make sure that you feel ready on the day you're taking the exam? Um, I can answer that. So. I will start by saying I also joined the DAT boot camp on Facebook and some of the advice is really good. Some of the advice is not. And I listened to some kind of not good advice and, you know, you get a lot of hurry up and schedule. Otherwise you won't get the first round of acceptances. You won't get in blah, blah, blah. So I listened to that advice. I also listened to the advice of you can't extend your test date. So when my test date came, I was not prepared, but I didn't want to forfeit the I forgot how much it cost at that time and it was already there so I went and took it um I would say don't do that you can extend it they you there is a fee there wasn't one when we took ours because it was COVID but there is a fee to extend it you can extend for 45 days if you get to um I would say if you get to within two to three weeks of your exam at the very latest and you really just you haven't gone through at least three practice exams, you don't feel like your scores are getting better, I would pay that extra to make sure that you get the score that you want that first time. Um, I also use two different methods of studying two different preps, but I didn't use them for the whole thing. So I used mostly um, DAT bootcamp, um, but I was really focused on PAT for whatever reason I thought sciences and then PAT. So I, that's why I use booster. So I think booster helped with the PAT, but I don't think it was better than boot camp. Um, the second time I took it, my score did go up, but kind of like the, I had my highest score was general chemistry, but I was so focused on everything else. Everything went up on the second go around, except for that one, <laughs> but my overall score was better. So I guess I did something right. Um, also, I just kind of took my time. I even made my mom who, my mom's a teacher, but she doesn't teach sciences at all. I even had her helping me study. I was like, I'm going to send you these things and I want you to quiz me. And it worked in, as far as making it more interactive because I'm more of a kinesthetic learner. So just sitting and reading and doing flashcards and answering questions after a while, it gets kind of um, monotonous for me. So I would say if you're finding that you're going over the information and it's not sticking to try to learn it a different way, uh, try to write it out. If writing doesn't work, try flashcards. If that's not sticking, try, like Livy said, there are mental maps. There are all different types of things you can do, but find what works for that subject. And then when you see yourself doing better and getting more and retaining information, um, keep doing it. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, well, what uh, the what was the question again? Sorry, it was uh, what? Can you repeat the question, my bad. So, so the so the question was: we have shared we have shared what resources we used and what worked and what did not work. How do you know that you are ready? Like, what do you do oh, to make sure yeah. that you are ready to take the exam? Yes. Okay. Um, so I always describe this to my mentees that there's like two different feelings that you're going to get. 
there's going to be, there's going to be, I studied for the DAT for six months. So it took me a while. Um, and there, I rescheduled my exam. I kid you not more than four times. Like I was just like, no, I'm not ready. No, I'm not ready. No, I'm not ready. You know? And every time I rescheduled, I had this like really gut feeling that I really truly wasn't ready. Like I did not feel confident in myself when I, when I decided to take it, it's not that I felt confident with myself. I just was at, at the point where I was like, Crystal, you've literally done everything that you could. You took every practice test, every full length, every question you reviewed. I'm overstudying and you need to just rip the bandaid and take it. It wasn't so much like, I'm just going to take it and see what happens at that point. I think I was just scared to take it because I didn't want to see, or, you know, I was just scared to take it. Um, so I think there's going to be two different, and you'll know the feelings. Like for instance, when you're, when you're doing your practice exams and you're scoring 14s, like you're not ready to take it. Don't take it. Keep studying. Once you start getting like maybe 18s, 17s, 19s, I, you, you're going to see an improvement in your scores and you're going to start hitting the little things that you're like, okay, what sections am I scoring bad in, you know? And, and then you're going to review, you're going to review that and take another one and see if your st score stays the same or not. What I heard was that DAT bootcamp scores, they're always a little bit lower than the actual, uh, the actual exam. So I scored I never scored 20s on my DAP bootcamp website, but I scored 20 and 21 on my DAP. Um, I was scoring like 17, 18, 19s. Um, so, but one thing I will say is what Livier said. I also took full length simulation exams and I literally pretended I was gonna go um, to the exam center, did everything, didn't eat, ate when I was supposed to eat at the exam center, turned off my phone. I didn't even keep my phone on me for that day that I was taking the practice exam because I heard some test centers just make you lock your phone and you can't get it out. So I literally trained myself to be in that testing center because again, you do have to build stamina when you're taking that test. Because if you if you zone out a lot, like I, I, I have the very short attention span. So like if I zone out, like, I, it, it'll be over for me. Like I needed to train myself to be in front of a computer for a long period of time. Another thing that I did that I, I found extremely, extremely helpful was come up with little strategies um, in terms of how to navigate the test. So when you are using DAP bootcamp, they give you like how it's going to look. It literally looks exactly like that when you go into the testing center. It's like gray, it's ugly. You have to you have to literally find ways that you're gonna go through the questions and maximize your time. So if if you're reading a question and you are in between two answers, you cross the answers that you don't know off and leave the two answers, and I would hit review. And then I would go to the next one. If I absolutely did not know it within the first thirty seconds, I would flag that question, skip it. If I and I came up with little like little systems where at the end of the the at the end of the time like I think I had a good 45 minutes to review my whole section because I was you know going fast coming up with these little like okay I know I'm in between these two answers let me go to those first before I touch the ones that I absolutely didn't know and if I have to guess on those I'll guess on those so just coming up with little systems that are going to help you um take the test and go back to the questions you need to review in a more effective way could also help also, for the DAT, I believe the science section is clumped up together, like Gen Chem, O Chem, and Bio. Mm -hmm. I started with my um, with my strongest subject, so I did I did O Chem first, I did Bio, and I left Gen Chem at the end. So, and I knew when the question started because in DAT boot camp, it's like questions one through whatever our bio questions want this through whatever our gen chem. So I was able to kind of like take the test in a different order because I knew that those numbers and I was able to go through the sections I, I knew good quickly and I had more time for the section I that I sucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a struggle. That was my that's what I did.
<laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. So then, Dr. Mora. So I only used the the boot camp resource um because it was also during COVID times. The test date, I kept like screening for test dates available. I didn't want to have to like travel anywhere to take a test date. And then I found one date that was available in uh Glendale. I think it was Glendale. I don't remember the location now, but it was close enough. And it happened to be on my birthday. So I was like, okay, like it's meant to be. I'm this is gonna be the test date. I'm going to take it that day. Um, I was doing an online course called BDP through UCLA at the time. And the like the lecture, there was a lecture the evening before my test date. And I hopped on because I was like, OK, I'm just going to mentally check out and like picture myself at UCLA already. And I told the the speaker for that day, I said, hey, just I messaged him. I said, my test date is tomorrow. any last minute advice. And he had a really good piece of advice. So I'm going to relate to you guys. He was like, you've done all that you could possibly do to this date to get ready. So if there's anything that you still feel like is not your strong suit, write it all in one sheet of paper and like review that sheet of paper, like take it with you to the test date. And before you leave your car, like review it again, like whatever equations you have struggled with or whatever X, Y, Z. And so I did that. And then at the bottom, I was like, you got this. And like, I just visualized everything that I wanted to come out from that test. And I know it sounds cheesy, guys. Like, I, I promise you, this is not like pseudoscience. Like if you tend to get anxious, this is actually neuroscience, right? If you tend to get anxious or if you tend to find yourself feeling overwhelmed or like, even if you, you can't leave the test center, but you can have like a, a motif that brings you back in, right? So like mine was, Uh, singing in my head like I'm a horrible singer and I will not do that to you guys Iman is great at singing but in my head I was like this is it's a it's an Eminem song and it's like this is your shot like so if I was starting to feel like I was going off the rails I was like you got one shot you know like they probably thought I was going crazy and it's okay but you need to have faith in yourself but you need to also recognize when you're like getting overwhelmed so in the test center if you if rubbing your fingers makes you like center back in if singing in your mind or maybe not something that's disruptive to others like don't tap the desk or something but um that worked for me and I felt that I was ready because the the scores that I was getting on my practice tests were at the range that I wanted and that, like Crystal I also did better than what my practice scores were so I was really happy with that and I was like I'm just gonna shoot my shot um Also, my test was in July, so I was going to submit applications right after that. Otherwise, I would have probably like had to wait for another test date. But yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, just a mental note to everyone, like remind us, like when we stop the recording, so then Dr. Mara has to wrap Eminem's one shot for us. <laughs> Since that is what she uses to calm down. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'm glad that you ended with that because um, we had a question. Um, We have uh, a lot of like mentees. Or when you're going through that period, you're like, okay, I need to get an 18 in this and I need to get a 20 in this and I need to get a 20 at this in this. Do you have like any insight of what like you should aim for or any reason why you should aim for a certain score for like, is it better to get like a 20 in biology and a 15 in PAT? Like, are there like some, sub, sub, some parts of it that you feel like are more important than the others? Or how do you aim for that score to get? Or should I just aim for like an academic average of 20 or should I be aiming for uh, 20 on PAT? How, like with what you know now, how will you share on like aiming for like the subsections? That's, that's a tough question because to be honest, I still don't know how that works. <laughs> like in certain, Because I remember, I really do remember when I was a pre-dental or when I was like in the process of applying, I was just like, well, I'm hearing this and I'm hearing that. And I hear if I score bad on the PAT, I'm not going to get into dental school. Like I would hear all of these things, you know, and it would freak me out. Like I would be like, well, I have to do good in everything, you know, and to be completely transparent, I got a 16 on my PAT, like, and I I thought I was, I, I thought it was the end of the world. I kid you not. I emailed every school. I copied and pasted an email. Like, do I have to retake my dad? And I called every school Loma Linda because I was, I was that much in my head, you know, like I was like, I'm not going to get into dental school to me. 
now that I, I don't really know, I honestly do not know how um, admissions look at the DAT score. I don't, I think they look at, I mean, I don't even know. I don't know if they look at the academic average and the total science. That's what I was going for was the science, you know, because I was just like, oh, science, dentistry, like, okay, like that makes sense, you know? Um, and they were my weakest subjects, even though I was a bio major, like, um, I don't know. I just thought the sciences were more important, but I don't know if, yeah, I don't know the answer to that, but that is a really good question. And I've always wondered that as a pre-dental and I don't even tell my mentees, like study for this section, particularly, I just mm -hmm. say, try to do good as a whole, you know, yes. because if I were to talk to me again, I mean, I got in with the score I, I had, you know, and I, I did everything I could, but I, I would kind of just say, you know, focus on your weakest subjects and you'll be good. Cause math is math is math, you know, and reading is reading. Like, I, I mean, if you need to practice your speed and stuff, go for it. But I think, you know, the topics that you struggle with compared to the ones that you're, you're good at, but I don't know if any of the other participants, uh, have anything to say about that. I think, just what I've heard based on what I've read and what people have told me is that you want to get at least a 17 in all of your sections because apparently there are some schools that filter out students yeah. who don't meet a specific score. So for example, there might be a school that say you get something under 17. If you don't reach out to them, you will automatically be filtered out is what I've been told. I'm not 100% sure if that's true, but I do think that it's safe to get a score above 17. That's what I would say about it. Yeah, I would also say you want to make sure that what if you do get a score like that's on a lower end, like a 17, you want to try to try for it not to be the biological sciences or the PAT, because I feel like with dentistry, especially um, that's kind of what they look for the, the most. But overall, um, I tried to make sure nothing was like 18 or above is what I heard, but um, Marie is in the newer class. So there might be something different going on. I took the D18 2020. So things are a little bit different, but I would say if you're getting like on those practice exams, 18s and higher on the sciences, then you should be like, you should start to feel more confident that you're ready to take the exam. And this is also something that I remembered that I did that I didn't mention before. So I am very particular about like my testing environments. So I actually took the test drive. You have to pay for it, but it's essentially where you get to go to the test center, see exactly where you're going to be sitting, see how you check in. Cause they do like the wand and they, to make sure you don't have any you know, pat you down, make sure you don't have any materials on you and everything. And then they do like a little simulation where you can see on the, what the computer is like. So if you're kind of have like anxiety about testing centers, I would suggest that. And also um, they do offer accommodations. If you, I don't know, people's different situations. Um, if you need a separate room, if you need to, I think wrist braces might be included make sure if you need extra accommodations, you're asking for them because they do honor that as well. Okay. So just going through the questions, I will assume that uh, we agree that it does not really matter the resource. It's more about your study methods because someone was asking about, do you feel like one resource was better than the other? None of I you have a, I have an opinion about that. Okay. So I wouldn't say that one resource is better than the other, but I do recommend that for a booster, their PAT is very good. I feel like I learned a lot from them. What I've heard about booster is that it's better for practice tests. Mm -hmm. DAT bootcamp is good for solidifying all your knowledge. DAT booster is good if you need extra practice. So that is what I would recommend because when I went through DAT bootcamp, I felt like I was able to understand the actual material a lot better than I had with the AT booster. But it's not to say that one material is better than the other. It's just the way that you utilize it is different. Yes. 
and because for me, for me, I felt like I tested myself more with Destroyer <laughs> than Boot Camel Booster. I know for some people, like Destroyer is like way above what it's looking for. But I think it's not about the resource. It's more about like your study method. From the way you study, you can easily transfer that to what is needed for the DAT. Which brings me to the next question in the chat. Um, like, being in dental school or having survived didactic, you understand that uh, the DAT is like one, one of your exams. So what methods, what uh, study methods um, will be helpful to develop at this time that you're studying for the DAT that you can transfer to the volume that is in, needed for dental school? So how do, how do your study methods or whatever you do for studying, how can you transfer that from DAT to dental school? So... The transition from studying to the DAT to actual dental school, I would say that dental school is a bit more rigorous than the DAT, but the DAT helps you figure out your study method. And I think that's really important because, you know, like when you're going into a lot of material, a lot of material, um, you kind of have to figure out what works for you. So in terms of the subject and the content of the DAT, not really, but when you learn how you can study, that will really help because I think that's what helped me because for the longest time I didn't know what the right way to study was but after you know like figuring it out I think that really helped me in dental school does anyone have anything to add to that I think building up your stamina to study for uh as long as you can remain effective in your studying is the best thing that you can do if you I swear by Pomodoro for studying. Um, some classmates swear by Anki. I mean, whatever your jam is, go for it. Um, with Pomodoro, you study hard for and uninterrupted for a set amount of time. And then you take a scheduled break and then you go back to it. Um, first two years of dental school were a lot more heavy in like studying. Now we're back to another test because now some of us have taken boards or like I'm presently preparing to study for boards. So the testing, like, unfortunately, it's it's part of the hurdles that you have to cross in order to be able to treat patients. Like, it's a little more rewarding once you're in dental school because it's more tangible. Like, yeah, you're studying and it kind of sucks sometimes, but then you see patients and you interact with them and you see how happy they are to see someone who they can relate to in you. And you're like, okay, this is not bad. You know, like, this is why I'm doing it. So just picture yourself in that position already. That's the best thing I can do. And for Marie, like you're at UCLA now. So if you need anything, like you got three faces that you can read. Oh, thank you, you so know? much. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of tough out here when you're first starting. <laughs> but, sounds, you know, uh, I know it, it's crazy, yeah, but it's okay. It's okay. It's it, okay. It, We're getting through it. We're getting it, through it. it, it, it. And also, I feel like dental school is like so isolating that it's like important to have like areas where you can actually reach out for help and even better if it's on the same campus yeah yeah but so so sorry. like re regarding like the study habits I think we have a question regarding the DAT and the timeline for it um so there is like the concern where some people feel like if they do not take their DATs by May is, is it May 1st or June 1st I know for Texas schools it's May 1st but if you do, if you don't have your perfect score by that time that's it for the year you have to wait till next year what are your ideas about when you uh the perfect time to take the DATs and apply. So um, for me, if I could go back or if I could tell like, you know, younger my mentor, self. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My younger self or my mentees, you know, is uh, what I did was I, I started the application process in June when they opened and I took the data after I submitted my apps. And that was very stressful for me. And I don't know why I did that. I don't know if it was intentional <laughs> to add stress to me or if it, I was just like, you know, this is my, I, like, I want to apply this year. This is the only way I could do it because I was going to do it after I graduated because I just know myself and I couldn't study for the data while I was in school. I was working while I was in school and I saved enough money to last me a whole year 
so I can like, you know, do this. So I submitted my apps and then I took the DAT in October. So some of my apps didn't go through until I submitted until my dad score or until like my dad score was received by schools. I got seven interview. I applied to 13 schools, by the way, because I thought I was not competitive. I got seven interview invites post December, but I got one interview invite for UCLA the day I got out of my dad because my year for UCLA, they didn't require the dad. Um, but if in terms of timeline, if you can take your test before you apply, I would highly suggest that just because it is very stressful. And if God forbid you don't score good and you have to retake and you don't make what you don't make it within the time frame. I it's like it's kind of your money is wasted, you know, and it's a lot of money. It's like applications. And of course, there's like the the FAP waiver where it waives some applications, but it's still a lot of money. And if, in terms of timeline, I would suggest that you take it way before June. And you know, I know you have to wait a certain amount of time before you retake it. If you have to retake it, give yourself that time if anything happens. Um, and then that way, June, June, all you have to worry about is applications and you submit and you enjoy your summer. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's what I would do because I was kind of grinding the whole time through, through October, you know, I submitted June and then I was studying and studying and studying and studying and studying. And studying. And then I applied and then interviews and then it was just like, I didn't get any, right. any breathing, you know? So um, I don't know if anyone else did it differently, but I would suggest that in terms of timeline, give yourself time if you need to retake and then apply and then that's it. So I just want to make sure people know this because if you do retake the DAT like me, I do, you they require you to wait at least three months, three months before you can take the test again. So for me, I took the DAT in December, and since I didn't do well, I had to wait another three months before I could take it again. So if you do think that you might want to retake the DAT, make sure that you have three months before submitting your application, because that's like basically the rule. So you can't really get around that. But yeah, <laughs> that's what I would say. Oh, and one more thing. Um, the applications open in June, and most people say that you have a better chance the earlier you apply. So I would suggest taking it before then. But I know there are people who still apply, like, and take the DAT later, in, like July or August. I don't know if anyone else did this, but I kind of pre-filled out my application the cycle before because it remembers your transcripts, you already have like getting the transcripts in and making sure they're updated, putting in like the grades, all of that's really time consuming and tedious. Um, so I went ahead and actually decided on that before. So the next year it was already like in there for me. So I don't know if anyone, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I did not know you could do that for me. I just printed it out the year before that way I had everything written out and I just had to enter it. So as we are winding down, down to the last question, um, one of the main challenges- I just, I just wanted to highlight while we we're still in, in the recording that um, it, it's great news though. It looks like the DAT, you can take it after 60 days. Yes. From what I'm hearing. So that, that's good. <laughs> yeah maybe they took the feedback huh <laughs> I think I I hope they did because the 90 day 90 days was unreasonable oh, um great. so That's one of the big, one of the big challenges especially coming from undergrad and studying for the DAT and dental school is time management what are your perspective ideas or some anything you would like to share on how to start managing that time for the DAT and how you can transfer that into when you start dental school? 
because there is not a lot of guidance on how you handle your time. You have to have that discipline to do it yourself, especially covering the material for the DAT, because I will confess, I did not have the time to cover the material for the DAT. So I had to pick and choose which one I struggled with the most. But then in dental school, I cannot pick and choose which one the teacher is going to test on the exam. <laughs> and now I have to like figure out that time management, which would have been helpful if I had established it when I, the first time I had, I was faced with like volume and actually understanding that volume. So any ideas, tips and tricks on how to manage your time better for this, not just for this exam and how to transfer it into your dental school career. The queen of time management, Olivier should speak on this. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I'll share some pearls of wisdom that I've, I've gotten from mentors. Um, this person was like not in dentistry. Uh, he was my PI. Uh, and he said, a lot of people will agree with you that time is money, but very few of us treat time as we treat our money. So ideally with your money, you budget, right? Like you say, I'm going to make this much money up and this is what I need for rent. This is what I need for gas, blah, blah, blah. But we don't do that with our time. So like your sleep is like your rent, right? Like you need sleep. Don't forego sleep. I love my sleep. And I, I if I don't get enough, my daughter, like she, she can tell, right? Um, so like you start, we all have the same amount of time. I allocate, like, this is what, if I want to sleep this amount of time, like this is what working time I have. So I did a spreadsheet and I know that sounds so like military, like, and unfortunately, <laughs> like for me, that was the only way I could do it because then when I woke up in the morning, I was freed from thinking about not having enough time because I knew where my time was going. So I also embedded free time in that. I know it sounds very strict, but I embedded free time. And I think coming from a Latino household, like people, um, they're supportive of your goals, but they don't always know That's what it takes to get to those goals. So if you like print a couple of these and you tell them, hey, listen, this, this I, I, I want to be a doctor. You want me to be a doctor. We're on the same page, right? Yes. Okay. So this is what I got to do to get to that stage. Now you understand why I can't make it to the carne asada. Like, and I want to be there, but I have next Saturday free. If you guys want to have dinner, like I will be there. So a lot of people, once they see that, they're like, oh my gosh, like, how can I help you make this happen? You know, and you'd be surprised how, how unfathomable it is even to ourselves that this is what you need to do in order to make to that step. So I emailed someone during the chat. I said, hey, if you send me an email, like I'll share some of my templates with you. Um, everything's color coded. I had fun in a color that I liked. I had study in the colors that I knew I needed to be done. But that was the way that I visualized it. And in the morning, I knew that I only had to worry about what I needed to be doing for the next hour. And then the next hour hit and I was like, this is what I'm going to do. And it just... Um, it frees you from worrying. It's the same about money. Like if you can't just like go swipe me your card left and right, right? Like, you know what you have allocated and then you don't feel stressed about that. That's worked for me. Um, now my daughter does her to-do list and I'm like, what have I created? But um, I think it's a healthy way of setting expectations for yourself and not burning out before you even get started. But that's my, that's what's worked for me. Hopefully if you can take it, adjust it, share it, let's pay it forward. <laughs> pay it forward treat your time like your treat your time like your money thank you yeah. all so so very much um if there is any question in the chat that we did not get to please do still write it down we'll get to it at the mixer i cannot thank you all enough like this is like information that me as well as a non-traditional student as a minority as someone who did not have anybody in dentistry this is like information that i know that at that time would have been invaluable to me I appreciate you all so much for being so honest with your opinion, being so willing to share because you will be amazed at how many people are not willing to open up and give you that information that you need. And I'm sure for our mentees, this will be something that will help them as they prepare for this new application cycle. As I have shared, we, um, we've done a few sessions. I believe next month we are going to be talking about um, starting the application what you need just because just even filling that application it is way too many pages for me it was just overwhelming at how long it was and how much was 
needed. So we try to put up activities like this just to introduce the mentees because for me, the first time I ever saw what it looked like was when I logged on. I really wish someone had told me that you need to get all of this together. So that is what we plan on doing next. As for our mentors and for our panelists, thank you immensely. I know not just from me, but from our mentees. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you do have a chance, do follow us on social media because we do put all the information of what we are doing on there. And thank you. So with that, I will go ahead and stop the recording. Oh, and can I just say thank you too? I mean, this was so informative. And, you know, um, whenever we are meeting with our mentees or on this webinar and that will be seen um, from for many in the future, you always just hope that you can just touch one person and just something that you've shared that will just kind of really just click, um, change the directory. you guys really I think is just, just simple little you know shifts that you just need to make um and what you ended with uh Dr. Moore on the the, the, the your template and everything I called it healthy boundaries <laughs> it's so important that our mentees get that now before dental school and all these things are going to carry over your study pattern your sleep pattern your boundaries, boundaries. and everything as you go into dental school and, and it's true, you're never going to stop testing because after you do boards, then you're going to be specialized, it's going to be board certifications and CEs and all this kind of stuff. So learn it now, learn it right. And you guys are going to succeed because we want them to get into dental school, but we want them to succeed beyond dental it's school. So I just wanted to put that in and thank you again so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.